Okay. About three more breaths, just like that. Okay, so now <clears throat> I can't see you guys now because I'm going to record this portion. So uh, if you have a question, remember you need to unmute it and, and make yourself known, okay? So now keep that breathing happening. Let's take the right hand and place it on top of the left outer hand and you're gonna rub the, from the fingertips to the wrist, right? Then you go from the wrist to the elbow, that section. And notice how we're on the outer portion of the arm, right? And then go from the elbow to the shoulder, still on this outer portion of the arm. Then we get up to the shoulder and here, this right hand is on the shoulder. Bring the left hand behind the elbow and pull across so that you can get this right hand down your back a little bit further. So we're getting into our rhomboids, our trapezius muscles there. And then straighten out that left arm once more and slide that right hand all the way down. So sort of smoothing everything out. Then we're gonna to get to the inside portion of that same arm. So bring the right hand under, rub from fingertips to wrist. You're rubbing the palm. Then reach up that left hand, kind of like you're raising your hand, and go from wrist to elbow, but notice you're on the inner portion, the soft portion, the yin, yin yang, right, yin. Then reach up even higher if you can, maybe even all the way. If you can only reach up to here now, that's fine. Get that inner portion of the upper arm from elbow to armpit. Then go to that armpit and rub there. Now, if possible, reach way up and drop that hand over top so that you're getting the armpit. You're also stretching these muscles along the side of the body. Rub the armpit and down the side of the torso. Okay? And then in a smooth motion, all the way out to the fingertips. Let's go to the other side. So now we switch. Outer portion, fingertips to wrist. <clears throat> fingertips to wrist. Then wrist to elbow. Outer portion, yang. Outside, the side that sees the sun, yang. Elbow to shoulder. Then the shoulder, and then to get to the upper back, remember you take that hand and get behind the elbow, pull it across and rub the back, right? So you can see I'm getting pretty far down my back. Okay, and then in a smooth motion, sweeping all the way out to the fingertips. And then we come underneath, yin portion. Palm, reach up, you got wrist to elbow. If you can reach even higher, reach up, uh, elbow to armpit. Then as you rub the armpit, if possible, drop that right hand behind the back to stretch the side of the body and then rub the whole side torso. And then a nice smoothing out, smoothing out, smoothing out. And we're back <clears throat> to just the hands. Now with the hands, turn and we'll have, uh, we'll do this, this hand first. So rub the wrist, notice how I'm doing this. And again, this ends up being very, very intuitive uh, that I'm just showing you a few techniques. Eventually, if you get into it, your hands and, and body teach you various techniques that feel good. But I'm just doing this one here for now to grab and then I'm turning the hand, this hand, I'm turning it as I massage. So the hands are working together to create this lovely kind of opening up. Let's do it to the other side. Wrist, so I'm down on my wrist and I'm moving up through the, fore, uh, the back of the hand, up through the fingertips, do that again. I'm also creating strength in the massaging hand, right? I'm squeezing and doing these sort of intricate little grabs and pulls, right? Okay, now uh, take one thumb, place it in the center of the other palm and rub in a sort of circular like motion and, and also let your fingers be loose. So I'm not stiff like this massaging, but soft hand and then pressing and letting that sort of move my fingers 
these fingers kind of wave a little bit as I massage the center of the palm, right? Then same massaged hand, right? So we've been doing uh, the, the fingers, then we did the center palm. Now we do this uh, pinky. So turn this palm, palm down and then pull and release. Next finger. So you drop the pinky, go to the ring, pull and release. Middle finger, pull and release. Index finger, pull and release. Now this little portion right in here, this meat right in between is an important acupuncture point. So we rub there. Then the whole thumb, the thumb, most people think it starts here, but in fact, it move, the movability of the thumb is all the way down by the wrist. So rub that whole section of the thumb, the whole section, right? And then last thing for the thumb, turn the palm up, come over the top and rub this inner portion of your thumb. So this is an area that gets very sore, all these muscles uh, in, the, in the hand there, especially those of you that work on computers or uh, maybe have some arthritic pain or carpal tunnel, right? Okay, other hand now. So we take that thumb, place it in the palm, and we get this sort of wave-like motion, right? And then we're going pinky, pull, and release. Pull, ring finger now, pull and release. Middle finger, pull and release. Index finger, pull and release. Just making sure everybody's good here, sorry. And the thumb, so we just did the index finger. Now that little meaty spot right there, rub there. Then the whole thumb, remember the thumb moves all the way down at the wrist. So rub and then turn that palm over and rub that inner portion of the thumb. Find any sore spots, spend some time. And again, this is wonderful stuff to do when you're watching TV, you're just hanging out, listening to music. Just give yourself this love, this care, and the body really responds if we do it regularly, regularly, not once a week, right? So take this video and do it every day if you can, right? All right, now rub the hands to create a little magic heat, magic warmth. Open the hands and feel that little bit of warmth right in between your hands. Then we're going on to our neck, okay? So from the base of the neck, as low on your neck as you can get with one hand, come up to the base of the skull. And then do that with the other hand. So we sweep up, sweep up. We're changing the hands. They're sort of bicycling over each other, sweeping up. And as you're doing that, let your chin drop so that the back of your neck is long and you're getting a really satisfying full lengthening of the back of your neck. This is very soothing to the nervous system, right? Then take one hand and hold it up against the base of the skull so you kind of get any hair out of the way. Take your other hand and rub sideways, sideways. So now you're getting a different uh, approach to the tissue and then rub a little bit down and onto your uh, neck vertebrae. Then switch. So you grab with the other hand, take the other hand and go sideways on the opposite side of the neck and a little bit down. <clears throat> so this is very, again, soothing to our nerves, uh, which is just so important for everybody, but especially if you're suffering from any neural or nervous system uh, issue. Okay, done with the head. Oh no, not done with the head and neck yet. So we've done all this neck tissue. Now, right in this little nook, the base of your skull, bring your thumbs and rub up and down and side to side, kind of clearing out little circles and then down along the ridge of the skull. So trace, really see if you can feel the ridges and the nooks in your skull neck connection, all right? So rub, rub, rub. All right, now. The dragon through the weeds. So some of us, again, have more weeds than others. Uh, we all have more than we usually do, right? We were just talking about people not being able to get their hair cut. But dragging through the weeds, just tracing back through. And then we also scratch gently. This is really good for the hands, too. This little motion on your scalp, right? So it's good training for the hand strength. 
and it's also lovely for stimulating the neural points on the scalp. Okay, now we move to our forehead. Remember, forehead, when we're stressed, we naturally furrow, we tighten, we close. So we wanna sweep open and then back past the temples. We do that again. Open and then back past the temples. One more. Open and back past the temples. So we'll call that sweeping, right? We're sweeping that space clear. Let's sweep here now from bridge of nose, sweep across the cheekbones, up to the temples and past the ears, right? So before we went forehead, now we're going sinus region, sweep and clear. One more time, sweep and clear. Now, ears, watch one time. So we're gonna do it with both hands, but notice the hand here, it goes over the ear and then I press the ear into the side of the head. Again, if you have hearing aids, you can't really do this one particular. So press and then you squish the ear against the head and then you come underneath and do it again. So there's this circular motion that really stimulates and clears this out. So let's do that with both hands. Circle and under. Circle, press it into the head and then come under. One more. Now, when you're under the ear, the next technique, index finger behind the ear, middle finger in front, and we rub the ear root. So I'm right up against the skull, right where my ear meets the uh, skull, and then I'm going up and down. So now do that with both. Root of the ear, up, down, up, down. And then last one with the ear, watch me again, cutting while circling the hand. So I'm cutting while circling both both sides get the entire ear this one is so so soothing uh so lovely okay now the jaw the jaw right starting right in front of the ear lower ear and we're going to draw a jaw while sweeping down and then get to the chin and come all the way down the throat ah so nice Again, jaw all the way down and all the way down. One more, jaw all the way down. All that tension that we just walk around carrying, we can clear it out. Okay, now our, uh, we're done with this portion. Now we're down here. Feel your collarbones, right? Travel your, uh, this will be your left hand. Travel it out along your collarbone, right? So you feel that bone. Then come below the bone, drop below it, and you can feel your chest. There's this little nook, this little corner here, and it's up below the bone. Now take your right arm and drop it like this. This is internal rotation, and that creates even a little more access. Now once you're in there, you're pressing and then circling. Pressing and circling just to stimulate. This is lung point one and two. So really great for respiratory health, okay? So get that space clear. Then we move to heart point. Heart point is outside on the rib and just below there. So the armpit's up here below the armpit and rub there as well, All right? So we got lung point, heart point. Then we're coming under the chest, up the chest, and now we're on to our arm. One final technique and then we'll switch sides. We grab our own arm. Think of a tube of toothpaste that you're trying to squeeze the toothpaste out of. Treat your arm like that. So grab your arm and squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it all the way down. This clears the lymph system. It helps really clear out that lymph system. These are all massage techniques. Let's do that one more time. So grab a hold and squeeze out that tube of toothpaste. Squeeze it out, squeeze it out, and release. Ah. Okay, other side, lung point one and two. So you travel along the collarbone, drop just below it, and then the left arm internally rotate, and we get in that little nook, right? Get in that little divot, lung point one and two. Great for respiratory health. Then we go heart point to the outside of the rib, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. 
and then we're coming under chest. So from heart point under your chest tissue, up the middle of the uh, torso, and then tube of toothpaste, right? So we're grabbing and squeezing. And notice also when my hand is going down, I'm also pulling my arm through it like a sword out of a sheath, ah, right? Do that one more time. So we're squeezing and then pulling that arm back and through and clear, right? Okay, now to our lungs and heart. Palms, rub, rub, rub. So this is a basic technique where we rub and then separate the hands a little bit and create that little bit of uh, heat and warmth. Then place one hand on the sternum, the center of your chest, other hand over the top of that hand, and we go up and down, up, down, up, down. So you're tracing the full length of your manubrium, your sternum, your breastbone, all names for the same spot. Now we rotate sun and moon. Come up to the top of your manubrium sternum and across your collarbones out, then down the side of the rib cage to the lower ribs, you're still feeling your ribs, then come across the front, let one hand slide over the top of the other, you're in the middle again, come up, out, down, in. Up, out, down, in. Then you start to flow it a little bit, if you can. Go slow at first, and then you can get it to move. And then notice my shoulders as well are going through a really interesting kind of undulation, shoulder blades, arm bones, elbows. So it's not just what I'm rubbing, but it's also the act of doing it. Let's switch directions. Come across to the middle, down. Out, up, in. <clears throat> Try to push the edge of your range. Some of you might feel a little stiffer where you can't quite get that much movement, but over time, You'll be able to really get these shoulders and arms and torso moving. One more. Now we travel the hands down to this end of the sternum. This is called the solar plexus, this little kind of needle point, right? Xiphoid process. That's the name of this little needle. It's very fragile, but also powerful where there's a lot of tissue tied in. So hand over that and circle. And then we go out and in, front ribs diaphragm, liver and spleen. Then we come around the back. So this one's a little tricky. Tuck your arms like this. It's kind of a little chicken wing position, right? So we're here, we wrapped it around, back of hand touching the body, and then come around your back like this with fists and knuckles, knuckles on your back. Then palms, turn the hands, Rub your kidney area to the center spine and out along the muscles right there in that mid back, then down the back along your lumbar spine, <clears throat> down to your tailbone, right? All the way to the tail, to the whole back. Then we're coming up and around to the front and we've got liver and spleen, right? So in our abdominals, if you can find your front ribs, you can kind of trace them. That's my line there. And inside there is the liver on your right side and the spleen on your left, right? So then palms on the liver and spleen and then circle. This direction, the out to in is nourishing. In to out is dispersing. In general, they say disperse first to clear everything out and then nourish, nourish. I always feel like the nourishing is most, most appropriate. You know, we don't get enough sleep. We're always kind of low on energy. So nourishing type movements are so key. Then in the center of your stomach is your, I mean, the center of your belly is your stomach, your actual stomach organ. So palms over the stomach, stack, circle. Just soothe that stomach. And then go below the stomach, find your belly button, right? And then across that band is your intestines. Intestines. 30 feet, 25, 30 feet worth of absorptive material. That's where when we eat well and we have our good microbiome, we feel fantastic. When we eat poorly uh, and our stomach isn't right, 
everything is wrong in the world, right? So this is such an important place to care for. And then let's take our hands now onto our inner thighs and groin, kind of pelvic region, procreative region. <clears throat> and so we open the legs and rub inner thighs to groin, inner upper front thighs, center front, outer, backside, under. Then we've got back of knees, rub those knees, outer knees. Front knees, inner front knees. So, right, you're treating the knees like you would treat the entire other section, right? We would treat the whole thigh with a certain amount of preparation and, and, and attention. And then we treat these little sections of the knees with equal amounts because there's actually a lot of nooks, a lot of crannies, a lot of uh, pathways, high traffic, right, from the lower leg up and upper leg down. So the knees are so important. So maybe spend just a little extra time. There's actually some lymph nodes right in the back of the knees. You wanna spend extra time there. And some important <clears throat> chi uh, blood uh, nourishing channels right on the inner knee. So spend some good time there. Now we're gonna get, get to the lower leg, but this often comes, uh, uh, there's a problem here. If we don't know how to hinge at the hips, we'll sort of round and stress our back out. So first, make sure you hinge at the hips just like we've been practicing, and then slightly round your back so that you can now access your thighs, so your, or I mean your calves. So rubs, so you've got your thumbs, you got your fingers, you got the heel of your hand, you got the knife edge of your hand, the pinky side, so you can rub and kind of scrape and clear, get the backs, right? And so you might even go up to the knees again and then go from the knees down. Cleaning it out, inner. Then we got ankles. So stay a little bit. Treat the ankles somewhat like you would the knees. You got the little Achilles tendon, the back of the ankle, the under part of the ankle, the front, right? Then the outer, and all the way up the back. Now let's come all the way up to sitting. And we're gonna do this sweeping motion for our legs. Yang channels go down the back side and underside. Yin channels come up the inner front side. So let's sweep that. Bring your hands to your outer back side. Then fold at the hips, slide the hands down the outer back side. Come around your feet to the inner front. And then as you sit back up, you drag the hands on the inner front to the groin. Come around the hips to the back. Fold at the hips. Eventually, this is a, there's a really fun movement that we do when we're standing uh, that, that works here. And I'm going to show it to you sitting now. So this is first version. This is symmetrical. Down the outer back side, up the inner front. Then we do this one where you take opposite hand. And this, be careful with this one just because if you do it too vigorously and you have some, some tension, uh, then you can maybe bother something, but eventually this feels so good. So watch me once. I'm taking my opposite hand down the outer backside and following with that other hand, coming around, coming up the inner front, and then switching. So now I'm going down, and notice my back, my torso, my shoulder are getting this sort of twist. And then I'm coming around and through and up the inner front and then we do that to the other side so it's opposite hand crossing and leading and we're doing one leg at a time and then the other side and eventually we'll learn how to do this one standing and it is just so invigorating one more of each down outer and around across and down out and around. If any of these things aggravate the body, feel free to chat with me about it after, but in the, in the flow of it, just don't do it, right? Okay, one more to even it all out. And we're back to sitting up. Someone is showing up here, okay. All right, so now we're getting right to, uh, we've got a few minutes left. We're gonna do some of, our, some of our tried and true exercises. So make sure you're sitting at that edge and we're gonna tilt the pelvis back, right? So this would be bad posture if we sat like it all day, 
But if we do it consciously and then round the rest of the spine, it's like you're pushing your spine to the wall behind you. Round it, slide your hands forward till you lock the elbows and uh, drop the chin. So now we open the back of the neck. And then come back to neutral. So move from your hips. If you just tip your pelvis back to neutral, there'll be a natural return of the rest of the spine and torso to neutral. Then tip your pelvis forward, arch the back, lift the chin, slide your hands back, and squeeze the shoulder blades and elbows together. Look up. And then relax that effort and settle to that all-important neutral. Now, take an inhale here. Exhale, tip the pelvis, round the back, slide the hand, drop the chin. That's empty breath. You're holding the empty breath. And then you inhale as you make your way back to neutral. Keep inhaling as you continue tipping pelvis, arching back, looking up, squeezing shoulder blades, elbows, holding the breath, just enjoying it, basking in it. And then exhaling as you start your way towards neutral. And then exhaling further. Active exhale as you round. Hold the exhale empty and just bask in that empty space, that open spine. One more of each. Inhaling passively as you return to neutral. Then actively inhale as you go the rest of the way to the arch. Remember to move from the pelvis, the hip. Exhale passively as you return to neutral, then actively as you push the spine back, round the back, open. And then let's come back to neutral, all the way to neutral. Inhale here. Left hand to right knee, right hand slide up to right hip or buttock and twist. Turn, look over the shoulder. Ring out the back. Inhale back to center. Hands come to either knee. Exhale, turn. Turn from the stomach area, then the chest. The hands reach across and grab and twist and look over the shoulder. Ring out the back. Holding that empty exhale. And then with that inhale, you come back towards center. Exhale, twist, two more to each side. So try to find a nice flow. Remember, you're not racing. You're not trying to get a certain number of repetitions done. It's the opposite. You're trying to get so deeply involved. Inhale, back to center. Get super deeply involved in the subtle realm of your experience, your brain coming down the center of your spine, extending out through those nerve pathways, connecting to organs and muscle sites, and learning to do everything without this unnecessary work, grind. One more each way. So much of what we're doing now is unlocking various gates of the body so that we can have an experience, final time, twisting, have an experience of an effortless, structural, muscular relationship. And then we can practice Tai Chi, which is how we move that body, how we accomplish actions without any unnecessary grip. And it's, it's quite powerful. Okay, so lastly with the spine, drop the arms alongside you. Let your right arm be heavier, your left arm so light that the elbow floats up like a marionette. And just let your spine droop a little bit. Let your head fall a little bit. Some of you will do only a little. Some maybe really go for it. Others may even let that arm go up. This is piercing heaven and earth. And then we let that left hand float down. We come back, remember, neutral. And then let left arm be heavy, right arm be light. Spinal bend. Remember, 24 vertebra, right? Five lumbar, 12 thoracic, seven cervical, each of which can just slightly bend to the side. Piercing heaven and earth. Let's do two more to each side. 
and there is no metal for getting to some distance right but in fact there's more of this feeling of appropriate right this word appropriate was used much by one of my favorite teachers he was just pointing out that that's the real Taoist way is not some sort of accomplishment but an attention to detail attention to sensitivity to note what is appropriate in each given moment so again for some of you it's it's really small right it might be just this little move i did here others it's a little more others it's a little more but practice personalizing how where along that spectrum how deep is ideal is is appropriate good let's make that our last one i think we're even um let's uh make sure again we're sitting at the edge shrug shrug up make fists tighten your face and then melt the face cheeks jaw arms uh, all the way down to the fingertips and then just shake your arms lightly noodles cook noodles again shrug up make fists tighten face cheeks eyes jaw and then melting all the way down Good, shake and release. Good, now this one, this one's that slightly tricky one where we round, we protract. If you can see my shoulder blades, they go apart, right? I'm not lifting them, I'm bringing them apart. And I'm rounding the back, I'm depressing the chest, and then I'm internally rotating the arms so the palms face out. So I'm wringing out the rag of each arm, right? Bring it out. And then release that effort and just float back to that neutral. Ah. And then we go the other way. The chest comes forward and up. The shoulder blades go back. The arms turn externally now. We're wringing out the spirals of the arms in the other direction. Lift the chest. And then relax that effort. Neutral. Again, rounding protract and internally rotate right and then we're back and then rolling open externally rotate and back to neutral now the full circle rounding forward just like we did with internally rotated arms then we're shrugging the shoulder blades up and bringing them back the arms pull along for the ride and roll open and then we melt everything down neutral again forward protract internally rotate shoulder blades up the chest starts lifting Shoulder blades back, the arms pull along like a tail of a dragon, getting pulled along for the ride. And then we're back to neutral. One more in that direction. Eventually, you don't have to think about it so much. It just makes sense. It's just like, oh, yeah, we're just flowing the energy through the, norm, uh, through the logical pathways. Now, reverse the flow. We go back and up. Now, when we come forward, shoulder blades roll forward. Notice the arms. They go from turned out to turned in, and then we release and come to neutral, sitting up. Again, roll open, shrug shoulder blades up, forward, roll those arms. And then they melt down, and we let everything come to neutral one more time. Roll. And down. Good. Okay. Now, sit back against the back of your chair. Right leg. Extend. Firm, firm. Point, flex. Again, point, flex. Point, flex. Point, flex. Switch legs. Put that foot down. Other leg up. Point. Flex. Feel shins, calves, stretching and strengthening. Feel the feet all the way through to the toes. All the way through to the toes. 
switch. That was point and flex. Now right leg again, in, out. Notice the foot is in a slight flex position and then I'm just rolling in, rolling out. Called inversion, eversion. In, ever. In, ever. One more. Switch. In, ever. In, ever. And back down. Now the full circle. In, point. Out, flex. In, point, out, flex. Two more. Four in each direction today. And then we'll switch directions. Out, point, in, flex. Out. And again, the word I love to point out is not number of reps, but the word thorough. Be super thorough with each rep. And that's what gets the brain really involved, the nervous system challenge. Other side, circles. So we're going in, point, out, flex. The slower and more attentive, the better. For the tissue, the, the joints as well, but also the brain and body benefit is best. Go the other way, circling. Good, and back to center. Set that foot down, scoot once more to the edge of your chair. Now, <clears throat> this one is kind of important here for the hips because our legs are so often just in this relationship, right? Maybe we lift our leg to step up a stair, maybe we walk, whatever we bend to sit down in a chair, but our legs rarely open and close in the way that they can and should. So, lifting the ball of your foot Swivel on the heel and roll that open and notice the hip is externally rotating. Then lift the heel so the ball of foot's on the floor and swivel at the hip and turn. Notice now your thigh drops sort of in and it looks kind of funky, but the joints are all done correctly. The joints are perfectly safe. Then lift the ball of your foot again, turning on the heel open. We should be a little more open now. Place ball of foot down, lift heel swivel, drop that thigh in again, get that little ringing out in the groin. Then lastly, on the heel, roll it all the way open. So now we're at our widest. Some of you, your widest will be here, others more, 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 whatever it may be. But now rub, inner thigh, because now we're challenging the tissue. We're gonna, we're gonna feel resistance in the groin, maybe at the knee, then use your hands to promote letting go, opening up. Also awareness, stimulation, right? All right, now let's walk it in. Swivel and turn in. Ball of foot down, lift the heel. Swivel and turn the knee out as the heel walks in. Knee in, toe in. Heel in, knee out, and then we're neutral. Other leg, lift ball of foot. So it's external rotation, land the ball of foot, lift the heel. Internal rotation, let that thigh roll in in the hip socket. Lift ball of foot, external rotation. Put ball of foot down, lift heel, internal once more, and then last time at your widest, whatever that is, and then we rub. Inner knee, thigh. Good, walk it back in. All the way back in. Now we're opened up. Let's do stand to sit. So scoot to the edge of your chair. Again, if you're not there, feet come a little bit back. Hinge at the hip crease. Let's just do that twice more. Hip crease, back to sitting. Hip crease, back to vertical. Now make fists, hip crease, forward, pausing, and then push down. And notice how pushing down sends you up. Get all the way to the top. Then let's sit. The butt has to go back. Notice I haven't bent my knees yet. I've just begun this process of butt behind my ankles, head and shoulders in front, and then I bend the knees and sit, land, sit. Again, hinge at the hip crease, forward. Then push to rise up, butt back, 
sit, land. Two more. Forward. Rise. Back. Sink. All right, we're opening our back. We're opening the buttocks, the hamstrings. There's a flexibility piece and there's a strength piece. And then there's just the technique of just understanding what it is we're doing. Okay, now that you're up, we're going to just finish. We're, we're running out of time here. Um, uh, before you're going to head off to the next class. So we'll just do a very brief Tai Chi just to touch in on it. So we've come all the way up to standing. Make sure you're feeling safe. You got any canes, walkers, uh, support network there. And then from here, we're going to get our stance a little wider, shift your weight over to one foot, and do just a small swivel step with the empty foot, and then shift back to 50-50. So here we are in the middle. Now, Tai Chi squat. Lock your knees to feel what it's like to be depending on locked legs. It's very brittle, brittle stability. It's not rooted. And then unlock your knees. Just let them bend a little and feel the ball of your foot, not your heel. So if you're too much in your heel, you're not going to feel balanced. Find that ball of foot and just let your weight pierce the ground right through it. Then straighten up and lock the knees again and feel how that sort of uproots you. Not very rooted. And then open the knees. Let your body weight just descend through the legs and connect to the ground. Now let's stay connected to the ground, and we're going to shift the whole body to the right, keeping that little bend in the knee, right, and also not letting ourselves go out with the hip. Whole body a little bit to the right. Let the weight get through to the ball of foot, and then shift to that left leg. Let the weight get through ball of foot. Then shift to the right, weight goes through, ball of foot. Shift to the left, weight goes through, ball of foot. Now grab hips, shift weight to the right, weight goes through, ball of foot. Turn the hips slightly so pubic bone and belly button point just a few degrees right. Keep them pointed right, shift to the left, weight goes through to ball of foot turn the hips left. So it goes in that order. We stay turned to the left. First you shift, then you turn the hips, not the shoulders. They come with you. Shoulders and head come with. Again, shift, then turn. Now if you let your arms be Tai Chi-esque, now we're doing the bare washing paws in the stream, but the hands are third, they're tertiary. They're an after effect of what I'm doing, shifting, then turning, and sweeping through. And the hands turn around and they cut, sort of drag behind, shift, turn, and sweep. Right? Shift, turn, and sweep. Shift, turn, and sweep. One more each. Shift, turn, sweep. Shift, turn, sweep. Good. Now we come back to the middle. We're going to do our qigong. We're going to go just a teeny bit wider stance. So shift to one leg, heel, toe little wider. This is called gathering from the earth and spreading across the sky. So we're scooping, bringing the hands up, turning them, and pushing up against the sky. Some of you, again, my screen's a little low right now, but pushing up, some of you will be able to straighten. Some of you will just kind of feel yourself right about there, and that's fine, right? So you're pushing up against the sky, and then sweeping the hands out, Right, sweeping the hands out, and then here, sitting like a squat, the butt goes back, the knees bend, sit. So we get low to gather from the earth, sweep the hands and scoop and bring the hands up to the chest. Push into the ground, come all the way up and carry that through, push up against the sky once more, up against the sky. Maybe you fully straighten if it feels good. Arms out like flying crane wings. 
sit the tush behind, sink down like you would for a squat or sitting in your chair, but our feet are a little wider so we can kind of really get in there. And then sweep, scoop up from the water, from the earth, hand to chest, push down to send you up, right? And hold up the sky, spread it across the sky, two more, sit the tush behind you. Remember that technique, such a basic technique that we must have. And then the hands sweep and scoop. The whole while our back is getting some strengthening there. Then push down, carry it up. One more time, spread across sky. One more full round, sitting. So we're going down into our earth element and our power of our legs and we're scooping it up and we're bringing that power up like a geyser from the earth all the way through. And then the hands go out all the way down. We close our practice by shifting the weight to that one leg, heel toe, that swivel step, right? So that's showing up here in our standing work that we did when we were sitting. Swivel step back to a safe distance and then back to the middle and what's called sinking chi to wash organs. Hands come up and over, hover them at the brain, then down to the eyes, mouth, throat, heart, lungs, liver, spleen, kidneys in the back, stomach, intestines, hover them over the belly, and then sealing the practice by placing one hand on your navel, other hand over that hand, like a cork in a wine barrel, seal. Take three breaths in, out. Relaxing all tension, breathe in, out. Final breath. And then release your hands down. Make sure your chair is behind you. Have a seat in your chair. Make sure you are safe and ready. And then head off to the next class, those of you that are going that way. Uh, the rest of you, I'm going to unmute. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free. To, uh, to chat with me for a little bit. Um, otherwise, the next class, I can't remember which one it is actually. It's the, uh, it may have been uh, the, the voice class, but um, so yeah. So thank you everybody. How, how was that for you? That was great, Otto. Thank you. But I couldn't get in at the beginning. I just kept saying waiting for host for oh, like really? minutes. Yeah. Really? Then Adam sent me a different link. But and I think the one that I just got in, but the second link. Excuse me, Justin. I also came in late. Jeez, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so we will, uh, 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 the video that I made today, um, oh, I, I'm going to stop the recording, actually. Um, stop recording.